My name is Leandro Demon Riva, and this is the Educated Barfly, and now it's cocktail time. I am not Kevin Coase, but still cocktail time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the first cocktail we're going to do today is, well, we're going to just flip the whiskey sour on its head and just do an Añejo tequila sour. So uh, I guess we could just call it an Añejo sour. So the great thing about uh, Cantera Negra Añejo tequila is that while most tequila makers will age their añejos between 15 and 18 months, the tequila in this bottle is aged for no less than 30 months. And it is a blend of bourbon barrel aged and cognac barrel aged tequila. So you get a lot of those really nice bourbon barrel notes. You get, obviously you get the, the oak, but then you also get caramel, vanilla, uh, a little tinge of sweetness, and then you get that nice agave character as well. I think that this tequila would really appeal to a lot of whiskey drinkers, and so we're gonna make a sour out of it. So first thing we're gonna do, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of the Cantera Negra Añejo, crack our egg in the separate tin, like so. And then we're just gonna do our dry shake or reverse dry shake if that's your preference. Make sure that your tin is nice and locked. And we're just gonna give it a nice 30 second shake. You're gonna take one big solid rock, put it in our tin. When you shake with one big solid rock, you get very little dilution, but you increase the aeration of the egg white in the cocktail, giving you a nice thick foam. So we give this guy's a nice little double strain like so. And then instead of bitters, I think I'm just gonna give it a little dusting of cayenne pepper. Let's give it a little pinch like so. Maybe it went a little heavy with the cayenne. Ooh, let's taste this. Cheers. I mean, what's not to love? What's really nice about this cocktail is that it retains the character of the Añejo tequila. You get all of that agave, and then you get those nice barrel notes. It's a really nice alternative to a whiskey sour. That's all I have to say about it. It's delicious, go make it. So the next cocktail we're doing today is called a Tequila Maid, which is a riff on a Sam Ross cocktail from 2005 called A Maid, which is a gin lime sour dressed up with a little bit of mint and some cucumber. Uh, it was created for Eastside Company Bar. And if you guys don't know who Sam Ross is, just as a little reminder, he's a former milk and honey bartender who now owns Attaboy, which is in the old milk and honey space. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get six to eight mint leaves, throw them into our tin like so. Then we're gonna add in a couple cucumber slices, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. We're gonna get a muddler. Ah. We're gonna get our uh, muddler or other similar blunt object and give this a nice little muddle. Now, what you wanna do here is you wanna press the mint, but not shred it. So you don't wanna be doing this. And that's why I put the cucumbers on top so I could give the cucumbers a nice press and just press the oils out of the mint without shredding. Now you will get a little bit of shredding when you shake, but it's actually not going to release any of those unwanted flavors in the cocktail. Two ounces of our Reposado tequila. Add in our ice. Give it a nice shake. Double straining this guy into our glass like so. Let's give it a taste. Yes, it's like a vibrant lime candy. You get all of that mint, simple syrup balancing out the tartness, and then you have uh, some of those barrel notes from the Reposado tequila. This is obviously a tequila that's a little bit less aged than an Añejo, but you still get those nice vanilla caramel notes, and it just goes really well with this cocktail. So there you have your tequila made. So for our last cocktail, I decided that I couldn't have this bottle of extra añejo without making an old fashioned. The extra añejo is aged in casks for no less than 36 months. And again, it's a tequila that has been aged in bourbon and cognac cask and then blended very nicely. I have this nice artful piece of ice here as well. So I figured we might as well make an old fashioned. So first thing we're gonna do, four dashes of Angostura bitters, two ounces of our extra añejo tequila, one bar spoon agave. Take our artful ice, drop it in, give it the old stir. And then instead of orange, I'm gonna give this a grapefruit twist. So I think it's just gonna go so well with the character of the tequila. All right, let's give it a taste. Wow. 
wow, it's like the blend of that Angostura bitters along with the slight agave sweetness. And then you've got the, the barrel character from the tequila it really gives it almost this like chocolatey vibe. It's really, really decadent. Those uh, grapefruit oils really blend very nicely with this tequila. I mean, it drinks almost like a whiskey. And what's crazy is there's so much chocolate character in that. It's just fantastic. It's like a nice dessert kind of old fashioned or after dinner drink. Instead of a tequila old fashioned, let's call it an añejo old fashioned. So the story behind Cantera Negra is actually a very interesting one. It all goes back to 2006 when this competitive fisherman named Lance Gildner was down in Cabo competing. And on that trip, he caught a 318 pound yellowfin tuna, which shattered the records of that particular competition. To celebrate this record breaking victory, he took the team from his boat to a local bar and asked the bartender for their best tequila. The bartender turned around and extracted the tequila out of this unmarked barrel, gave it to Lance, on the first sip, Lance knew that he was tasting something very special, and he asked the bartender where the tequila was from, and the bartender would not tell him and told him it was a secret, and he would never tell them. So every year for nine and a half years, Lance would go down to Cabo, compete, would go to the same bar, he would ask the bartender where he got the tequila, and every year the bartender would turn him away. Finally, he was let in on this secret, and within a week of finding out, Lance had a meeting with the Baccarano family, and he left that meeting with an exclusive license to import Cantera Negra into the United States. Cantera Negra takes its name from the volcanic soil of Jalisco, where the agaves are grown to full maturity and then harvested by hand. Every tequila that they make that requires aging is aged in barrels made by their very own on-site cooperage, which sources its oak from a closely guarded source. The tequilas are two times distilled in copper pot stills and fermented in stainless steel tanks. And each one that is aged doesn't have a set time in the barrel, but actually relies on a family tasting council to taste the doneness. So some of the tequilas like the Añejo or the Reposado or Extra Añejo will vary in color, but they blend so expertly that they guarantee that the flavor profile and tasting notes will be uh, consistent throughout the portfolio. If you guys want to procure your own bottle of Cantera Negra, hit the Drizzly link down in the description below. And if you want to learn more about them, head on over to their Instagram, at Cantera Negra Tequila. It's really good stuff. I really enjoyed it, so go get some. Oh, quarry. Cantera means quarry. Quarry, there you go. Black quarry. Black quarry. With oak that's been sourced from a very closely guarded source. I thought we going to say forest. I was going to closely guarded secret as I was going to say, but it's really source. Look, I was like, I'm going to give it a dusting of cayenne pepper. I'm so glad I didn't just pour it. There's no top on it. Wow, it's crazy how much chocolate character is in that. Insane. I wonder how much is it in the actual tequila itself? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty present in the tequila itself. It's like really has this, you know, it's just like you get deeper barrel notes. So you get all of that, like, you know, vanilla and caramel that you would get in bourbon cask, but then it has this like chocolatiness to it that's really prevalent. And I'm wondering if that's just the, the character of the agave itself as it's been aged. I mean, obviously it is, you can cut that out. You just have this nice chocolatiness to it that is just incredible. And then it's just amplified in the cocktail along with the citrus note that kind of gives it a nice zip.